that in it. We're going to ask that you stand and help us sing Let It Rise.
chapter, verses 14 through 20. And it reads, When the hour have come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desires, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Amen. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God come. For he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. God, for your grace, your mercy, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you being the sovereign God that you are, Lord. God. Yes. Thank you, Lord God, for sending your darling son on the cross. The dying Lord, Father God, but yet rising with all power in you. That he shed his blood on Calvary for Lord, Lord. And I just want to say thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. For you are worthy to be praised, Lord. Because beside there, there is no other but you. For you are the almighty. Yes, Lord. The all-knowing. Yes, yes. You are the all-present God, Lord. Yes, Lord. And you everywhere at the same time. And we want to say thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for being a mind regulator. That you brought us to the house of the Lord this morning. That we may worship you in spirit and in truth. For God Almighty, we want to give you the highest praise there is, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. But we will bless you. We will lift you up. Yes. Because we love you, Lord God. Yes. And we thank you for this day and all days, Lord. Yes. And we thank you, Father God, for what you have done, yes. what you are doing, yes. and what you will do, Lord God. Yes. We thank you today. Yes. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Because it's nobody but you. Nobody but you, Father God. And we're going to praise you. We're going to lift you up. We're going to magnify your name. Thank you, the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. For this, I pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
of the Lamb. We're glad that God has blessed us one more again. He has done it again. And nobody can do it like our God. And that's for we should praise, praise the name of the Lord. Let me call your attention to the book of St. Matthew chapter 5. In the New Testament, the book is St. Matthew chapter 5. The verses are 14 through 20. Matthew chapter 5. Let's look at verses 14 through 16. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. And you found it, you will discover these words. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on a candle stand or on a light stand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine yes. before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I want to just simply say, let your light shine. Let your light, light shine. Christians ought to let other people know who they represent. Christians ought to let other people know what they represent. Yeah. Christians ought to let other people know how they represent God. Let me just say to you, you ought not force it. You ought not have to tell it. You ought not have to push, pump, and prime. But what you ought to do is let your light shine. The children would sing a little song that would call this little light of mine. I am going to let it shine. It suggests to us today that their light is a little light. It suggests to us today that even though it's a little light, we've come to the conclusion that we ought to let it shine. Because they realize, they realize real well that their lights make a difference. Somebody in this room today need to know that whatever you are, as a Christian, your light make a difference. Regardless of where you go. As a Christian or a Christian, your life is on display. All right. And you are able to make a difference regardless of where you go. Right. We have to look at the fact that we are of a royal priesthood. We are of a holy nation. We are different than other people. We are Christians. We are of Christ, meaning we are like Christ, and we ought to be like Christ every step of every step of the way. Amen. Jesus preaches this sermon this morning, and he goes through three full chapters. It is important for us to know that Jesus takes his time. Jesus preaches on this dialogue, this discord that is known as the Sermon on the Mount and he didn't care who went to sleep. He didn't care who nodded off. But Jesus took his time. I wish somebody 
in the church today would just stay alert for an hour. Jesus goes not through one chapter. He didn't take his time through two chapters. But Jesus takes three, four chapters to talk about what he wanted to talk about. You look at Matthew. He begins at Matthew chapter 5. And he doesn't stop talking till he gets to the end of Matthew chapter 7. Had I stood this morning and I said to you, I am going to preach Jesus' discord on the Sermon of the Mount, somebody would have said, that's all right. But when I reminded the Bible students that the Sermon on the Mount carries through three, four chapters, somebody would have said, I left something on the stove. Somebody would have said I have to pick up somebody from the airport. Somebody would have said I got to get out of here. I can't sit this long. And, and somebody even would have said my medication won't hold for a full hour. All right, now. But Jesus has an audience of people. His disciples, his apostles. And, and they're listening to Jesus for three, four chapters. You got to know now that there were no chapters during the time that Jesus spoke. There were no verses during the time that Jesus spoke. So he begins with the beatitude and telling us, be this and God will bless you. He says, whatever you do, understand that you are a Christian. God loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life. He starts off in chapter five by talking about blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those who are able to bless others, even though the others not blessing them. All right. When he gets to chapter 5, verse number 13, he changes the strip and starts talking about salt and light. I just want to deal with the light this morning because we don't have time to, to deal with the salt. Because if I deal with five, six verses, then you're going to say he's trying to preach it all. What he says is, you are the salt of the world. He says, not only that, not only are you the salt of the world, but if the salt loses its savor, it is good for nothing but to be thrown out, to be trampled on by men. Let me tell you, Christian, let me just tell you this morning, you are a Christian. You are a Christian. You have testified that Jesus died on Calvary. Yes, yes. That Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. You are testifying that you believe this simple story will secure you on planet earth and it will get you to go to heaven. All right, all right. You are a Christ and you are Christ like you love the Lord with all that you have you know that God is special to you and you are special to God but one thing he says because you're special to God because God is special to you he classifies us as salt of the world we're salt we're salt now how many people grew up in the country how many people knew around October, November, and December it was hog killing time? And in the country, what we would do, I said we, what we would do in the country, we would let the neighbors know and they would come from east, west, north, and south. And all the men and the boys would gather together in freezing cold weather and they would kill the hog. It, it was hog killing time. And you know, when it's cold, it's just right to kill the hog. I know some animal lovers are present, but let me tell you, if it hadn't been for killing the hog, I wouldn't be here. I know we're going into our fast. Our fast begins, let me remind you while I'm here, our fast begins March 9 at midnight, which means it will be March 10. Our fast began, and when we begin our fast, there will be no pork, no beef. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It means, it means that you're willing to sacrifice what you love. 
Sacrifice what has kept you. Sacrifice what has put on you what you have on you in, in order to keep in touch with God. During hog killing time, we would kill hogs. It would be it would be cold outside, but it was a fun time for the boys. It was a fun time because we we watched the hog move for the last time. It was hog killing time, and after the hog was dead, we had what was known as the smokehouse. Now, the smokehouse then is not like the smoke joint down the street. You know, I ride down the street and I see smoke house, smoke place, a place of smoke. It wasn't that kind of smoke house. I'm still trying to figure out why Big C, they called it a smoke house, because there was no smoking going on in the house. But we had a smoke house. It was right behind the house. It was a big open room. And if you open, you know, if you open the door and went in, you would see uh, some ham hogs hanging here. You would see some hog hanging there. And then you will see some hog spread on the table. Uh -huh. And on the top of that hog meat, they would put salt inside the meat. Uh -huh. They would rub salt outside the meat. Uh -huh. Because the salt was there to preserve the meat over a long period of time. And it would preserve it from bacteria. It would preserve it from rotten. It would preserve the meat. And the meat would not stay. Right. It's because of the salt they put on it. The salt not only was used to preserve the meat, but the salt is now used for Christians. The salt is used to generate a thirst for the word of God. Let me just share with you. You're salt. My first point is, not only are you salt, but you make an impact. My first point is, every Christian in this room is making an impact on somebody's life. Chuck Barnes says, now look, he says, he says, I am not a role model. I'm not here to be a role model. But let me tell you, regardless of who you are, regardless of how important you may or may not be, you are a role model to somebody. Somebody is watching you, and as they watch you, you're making a valuable impact. You're making an impact on somebody's life. You're making an impact. You're making an impact on somebody's life, so much so until they want to be just like you. See this little five-year-old preacher? I said five. This five-year-old preacher in an interview. He's in an interview and, and the woman's asked him about what, what do you do when you preach? And all of a sudden, in the middle of the conversation, after Jennifer Hudson asked him, how do you handle yourself when you preach? All in the middle of the conversation, he's saying, I want to be like him, my daddy. My daddy is a preacher, and my I want to be like him. And in the middle of him talking about, now he wasn't talking about toys. But in the middle of him talking about church, all of a sudden he said, oh, he died. He did. I said, my goodness. I mean, five, what it says to us that people are watching you even at a young age. Now he can't even spell scripture. But he already hooping. He doesn't know how to breathe on his own, but he's already hesitating when he breathes. It's because for five full years, he has heard his daddy's voice. He has listened to his daddy. He has seen his daddy's reaction when it comes to the excitement of the word of God. So his daddy has made an impact on his life. Amen. And we can say he's too young. We can say he doesn't know what he's doing. We can say he needs to be in a child's place. We can say that he's growing up too fast. But let me tell you, every child I know is growing up too fast. Right, 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 right. I, I'm here to tell you today, every single child I know. I mean, they're driving 150 miles an hour compared to what I was driving. They got games that teach them things. They got, they got, they, they have social media that teach them things. And they got a mama, auntie, uncle, and a neighbor that teach them things. Their peers even teach them things. Yes. Yes. They're, making, they're making an impact. You 
as a Christian is making an impact on somebody's life. Amen. Doesn't matter if you go anywhere or not. Doesn't matter if you socialize with many people. You'll make an impact. And your impact will be lifelong lasting regardless of how you really feel. Ask yourself this morning, who, what life am I making an impact? Whose life am I making an indelible impression on? Whose life am I molding and I don't even know I'm molding? Some of you, some of you, some of you, earth, wind, and fire, you painted a picture and made an impression in your life. I didn't get you there. For some of us, the Manhattans paint a picture in our lives. For, for, for somebody, some woman in this room, they just love to hear, they just love to hear Teddy Pendergrass when he, he lowers his voice. And don't mention Barry White. Now, now, when Beyonce start jumping and moving, young folk ears perk up. Mm -hmm. And now, when we when we hear when we hear the latest jam, it gets our attention. It's because music makes an impact makes an impact on our lives. Man. Not only do music make impact, uh, who we hang out with makes an impact. The Bible says we as Christians, we as Christians make a difference. We make an impact on other folk lives. That's right. We are here to preserve this world. We are here to make other folk thirsty for the word of God. We ought to make other folk want to know what in the world going on with her, what's going on with him. And then they must come to the conclusion, I want to be just like you. I want to be blessed like you because they ought to see your blessings. Yeah. I'm not talking about what you drive. I'm not talking about where you live. They ought to see God operating in your life in such a way that they become thirsty for the God that you have and the God you represent. Yeah. So Jesus says, Jesus says, you are the salt of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You preserve this world. The lady M.L. Brown used to say it like this, the basketball coach in high school, at Gentry High School, he would say it like this. He would say, Nicodemus, sit down. <laughs> and after he said, Nicodemus, sit down, then he would say, it's because of praying people that you acting up in my house. He says, it's because of people that are still praying that the world is still spinning on its axis. If it had not been for praying people, then this world would be doomed and this world would be gone. Amen. But what he's saying, what he's saying to us is, as Christians, as Christians, as people of God, we are the only reason why the world is in a halfway good shape. Okay, a quarter of the way good shape. <laughs> we're the only reason because we're Christians. We we live the life as Christians. We don't just go to church on Sunday, but we live church throughout the week. We don't just walk with God on Sunday. We walk with God throughout the whole week and the weekend. It's because we're the salt of the earth, and we know that we are here to make folk thirsty for the Lord and thirsty for the word of God. We make a difference because people are preserved against evil. I oftentimes say, if you, you want folk to stop breaking in, you want people to stop shooting, you want people to stop shooting children for no apparent reason and, and, and have no control of bullets and guns. Get them saved. Get them to come to Jesus. Show them what Jesus is all about so we can preserve the world in which we live. So there is an impact. You're making an impact. The deacons back home made an impact on my life. The deacons back home made me want to be a deacon. I saw how they treated their wives. I saw how they treated their children. And when I saw how they treated their children, they didn't always have their children with a smile on their faces. They weren't their children's friends. They, they disciplined their children even outside the house. I remember going to the store. You know, we went to the store once every two weeks. We, we went downtown. Once every two weeks. We went downtown. I said we went downtown once every two weeks. 
And before we got downtown, Daddy would start in the car telling us what we're going to get when we get there. That's right. yeah. By the time he put the car in park, then Mama would say, when you go in here, don't touch anything. Right. Don't ask for anything. Mm -hmm. And you better not act a fool. So we would go in the store, and this boy would jump in the floor, and he would clown his mama, not my mama, but somebody else's mama. He would clown his mama. He would roll in the floor. He would act a fool, and daddy would look at us and say, you try it if you want. He would say, he would say, wherever you fall out on the floor, I'm going to fall right down there with you. We were like soldiers when we went. My mama was a drill sergeant. And my daddy was the one that held the reins. And when we went in, we walked like soldiers. We talked like soldiers. And whenever we wanted to do something that they wouldn't let us do, we would tell them, well, the weeks are going. And they would say, but you're not a weeks. And we said, yes, ma'am. And went on back outside and threw some more chunny berries. We exercised for a living. We, we, we got lessons for a living. We couldn't bring bad grades home. It's because the church has lost her savor. The church has lost her power because the church has pushed God away from the church. We got blinking lights. We got cushioned chairs. We got carpet floors. We're able to testify that God is good. But the fact of the matter is, God was good before we got cushion floors. Before we got painted walls. God has always been good. It is our responsibility to make sure that God is presented to other folk in our presence and through us. My first point is you got to make impact. My second point is you have to make influence. You, you, you got to influence people. You got to influence people. Uh, verse number 14, it says that you are the light of the world. It says, it says you're the light. You're the light. You're the light. You are the light of the world. You are what? You are the light. And if we were to turn the lights off in here, this light will shine brighter. You would see it with more distinction. It's because wherever there is darkness, light shines bright. Yes. I'm going to tell you now, I'm, I'm going to let you know that wherever there is darkness, that's when the light shines the brightest. Your girlfriends, your boyfriends, your, your dogs, your, your, your people that you hang out with, your family members, your cousins, regardless of where they are in their lives, they are looking for you, the Christ, and to shine a bright light. That's why mothers and fathers, that's why girls that grew up in Sunday school, that's why, why girls that, that came through Bible study, girls who, who went to church on Sunday, they end up with bad boys. They end up with bad boys, number one, because they're not able to influence them. And number two, because bad boys need somebody to pray for them when they get out there too far. You ever seen you ever seen girls that are good girls and they 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 get trapped in the middle of a junk pit with somebody that mean them no good? I mean everybody else knows they mean them no good, but she just can't see it. She's in love. She got butterflies. She got heart. She she's looking like like oh she's her head is all in the air because he said she was cute. Good morning, beautiful. And that's enough to make you lose your mind. <laughs> you, you, you all Google eyes because he called you on the phone. And they tell me now, you know, I, I've been out the game a long time. I mean, I'm, I'm an OG, they call me now. That's what the boy called me the other day. Hey, OG. <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been out of the game so long, I don't even know what the codes are anymore. But, but they tell me that it's more attractive to a woman if a man texts her instead of calling her. Let me tell you, when I grew up, when I grew up, they would, they would call or you would call and you would fall asleep on the phone and, and wake back up. And that was so attractive to them. Now they tell you, don't call me, text me. I want to feel your heart through my text. How can you feel a heart through a text? How, 
How can, how can you really understand where a person is through a text? Let me tell you, we got, we got this world on the answers about, this access is about 25% about now. We have to understand that life is different because people are different. We have to understand that life is different because the society has changed things. But you don't have to be a part of that society. You have to live in the world, but you don't have to be of the world. Be an influence. You, you let your light influence others. You let your light be a light before others. He says that we ought to have impact because we're the salt, and we must have influence because... We are a light. Amen. You are the light of the world. A city that is set up on a hill should not be hidden. Yes. Have you ever wondered why the preacher stands up here and you sit down there? Have, have you ever wondered why when you go to most churches, this area is, is elevated? Have you ever wondered that, 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 that man, is, is he all there in a bag of chips? That's why he's standing up there? I mean, we have to see, right? We have to focus, right? And Jesus used a boat as the first pulpit. The Bible says that he launched out. And when he launched out, the people were able to see him from a distance. And he used a boat for his pulpit. Let me just share with you, those of you who are in the pit, it's the responsibility of the word of God to pull you out the pit. And that's why we have a pulpit. It's not about elevating the man. It's about elevating God and, and lifting up Jesus. It's because we have to have influence. And it ought not be my thought that I have influence on Sunday morning because I have influence during the week. The, the, the smallest child in the room has influence. The smallest child. You can tell, you can tell when a child is in the house. Whenever a child enters the house, the baby cries, mama moves. The baby cries the second time, mama kicks and says, your turn. <laughs> the, the, baby, the baby has our undivided attention because he or she cannot take care of themselves. Therefore, they have influence. Everybody has influence, and, and you are influencing somebody to live your way, whether you want to or not. You have influence. You have influence. And when I grew up, Sister Richard, when I grew up, everybody in my neighborhood had influence. When we were acting up in the street and we got arguing over football and baseball, uh, Mr. Pete would walk, walk to the curb, and he'd just have a gym strap. Y'all know what a gym strap is? He would have a gym strap in his hand. He didn't say anything, Brother Irvin. He just stood there with the gym strap, and we got quiet. He had influence. He didn't have to warn us. He didn't have to tell, I'm going to tell your daddy. I'm going to talk to your mama. He just walked to the curb and just stood there and looked at us. And we got along so much better. Because he had influence. We didn't say, oh man, go back in the house. Because he had influence. And when you have influence, you have respect for other people because you are the light of the world. Look at the text. The text says, the text says in verse number 14, you are the light of the world and a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. When you're setting on a hill, you can't be hid. Since you say you are a Christian, since you say you honor Christ, you can't be hid. You ever seen, you ever seen a person, I know it never happened to you, but you ever seen a person go to another person and say, and I thought you were a Christian. I thought you were holy and you're acting like that. Now, let me tell you, some people will provoke you. Some people will get your attention. Some people will push you. Some people will walk up to you and say some things to you and double dare you to say anything back. You know, in my day, they used to take a chip, a piece of wood and put it on a brother's shoulder when they saw folk art. And they say, hey, there's a chip on his shoulder. I double dare you knock it off. Don't get pulled in. Don't, don't get sucked in. You need to make sure that you live your life 
As if you know God. As if you know that you're influencing other people. As if you know somebody is watching you. Because somebody is watching you. Your neighbor watched you this morning. I told you, I told you last week, 80% of the folk in your neighborhood don't go to church anywhere. And they watch you drive out. They watch you come back. They know right around when the New Beginning Church is turning out. They know when first Sunday is here because they say, well, he's going to take another 15 minutes to serve the communion. So, th so they'll be back in, 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 in just a few more minutes. We have to get to a point in our lives where we know that we have influence. And when we have influence, we are able to influence other folk to be like we are. People are going to be like you regardless. People going to watch what you do regardless. He says, you don't take a light and put it under a bushel. You don't take a city and put it under the hill because it is a city. First number 15 says, nor do you light a lamp and put it under a basket. I, I bought my little cover here because I didn't want anything to catch on fire up here. <laughs> so you don't take it and, and cover it up. You don't take it and mask it. You don't take it and cover it up. You don't take it and shut it down. When you, what you do with the light, you let it shine, you let it shine, and you let it shine. Amen. Nor do you light a lamp and put it under a basket, but you put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. God wants you to be about light. God wants you to take that New Year's resolution that you made a couple months ago and make some out of it. God wants you to be consistent. He, he wants you to let your light shine in such a way that you are blessing other people because God has not blessed you with that personality, blessed you with that gift just for you. God has blessed you with that personality, blessed you with that gift for everybody who meets you. People who look at you from a distance, they see Jesus Amen. in you. Do people see Jesus in you? Yeah. I, I looked at social media the other day, and I asked myself the question, because I didn't want to ask the person. What are you going to do when you can't dye your hair anymore? <laughs> what are you going to do when you can't stitch anything on your hair anymore. What are you going to do when you don't have enough in the top to stitch enough on the side? What are you going to do since you twerking now? What are you going to do when your knees are bad and you can't twerk anymore? What are you going to do with all your friends that you party with, all your friends you hang out with, all your friends that you contact on social media? What are you going to do when they go on also? I mean, there is more to life than what we're living. There is more to life than how we're treating ourselves. Every year we try to talk about fasting. We try to do it once a, once a year and maybe two times a year on a good year. Every year we talk, start talking about fasting. I can see folk right there in my sanctified imagination. He ain't tell me what to eat. And I've been eating this before he was born. And I ain't gonna change anything. And, and he can do, let me tell you, we don't fast for me. We don't, we don't neglect stuff for me. It's about you and your connection with God. And, and as you fast and God, God is asking you to give him something and throw away something and give him more time. As you are in, in contact with God, you make sure you develop a fellowship with him like none other. You don't take a, a light and put it on a bush. You don't put it on a basket, but you put it on a candlestick, and it gives light to all who is in the house. Right. My last point, I said to you, you got to make an impact. I said to you, you have to have influence. 
My last point to you today is you must have intimacy. All right. Sister, brother, I'm not talking about intimacy with him, her, or them. I'm talking about intimacy with God. And when you have intimacy with God, it shows in your life on the outside. It shows what's going on on the inside. I can tell, I can tell when new beginning members have prayed before he got here. They're not as grouchy. They're not as snatchy. I can tell when new beginning members have, have listened to their Bible, have read their Sunday school lesson, have studied through the book. Brother Whitlock and Brother Miles are happy that Sunday. Because they have students who are participating Students who are loving the Lord, they have students who are prepared and they're just so excited. Y'all ought to see them. They think they're walking on a cloud because they're just so excited. Because they know you have intimacy with God. They know that, that, that somebody has spent time in their word and they've spent time praying. They've spent time spending time alone with God and they can tell when folk got a private place mm -hmm. where they go to to call on the Lord. Yeah. They, they, you got a private place where, where you just close your eyes and you speak to God and allow God to speak to you. That's how you get intimate. You don't get intimate with a person without talking to them. You don't get intimate with a person without spending time with them. Right. Women all over the world say, he ain't working that much. That he ain't got time to call me. He's not working that much that he doesn't have time to, to text me. He's not working that much where he don't have time to stop by every now and then. <laughs> it's because even in the 21st century, it doesn't, doesn't matter if you are a lonely person or not. You desire some intimacy with somebody. Let me tell you, start with God. It says, verse, verse number 16, verse number 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let me tell you, this light been on for a while. And if we cut it off, it refuses to shine. Mm. This light been on for a while. It's a symbol of the fact that we sometimes as Christians, we get excited when we first get saved. Mm -hmm. We're on fire for the Lord and, and we're ready for everybody to go to heaven with us. And if you don't do it my way, I know you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. Now this joker has smoked, drank, parted all his life done everything that he or she can do, and now that they've been saved two weeks, now they are telling everybody, if you don't love the Lord like I love the Lord, then you're going to hell. God has been patient with you. And don't let a brother come out of prison that's been in there for a long time. When he come out of prison, boy, he's ready to set the world on fire, and all of a sudden, the light goes out. All of a sudden, his light is not shining. All of a sudden, she is not as shining as bright as she used to shine. I give honor to my brother who's present with us. I give honor to him for, for, for 20 years that I know about. His life has been shining. He's been a perfect example of somebody who come back, as they would say, to the free world and make a difference. He's been a perfect example of, of how God can use you after your, your recidivism rate is over. He's been an ideal example of, of how God can take you from nowhere to somewhere. He's been a perfect example of how he's made an impact, he's made influence, and he's been intimate with God. Why don't you be an example without having to go in? I always, I always say, Jesus... Dr. King, Dr. Rabbi Abernathy, Dr. Reverend Jesse Jackson did enough jail time for me. I don't have to do any for God to prove a point to me. Matter of fact, I don't like smashed peanut butter sandwiches anyway. 
Y'all get that later. Y'all holy. So Y'all never been to jail. <laughs> Y'all never spent a night in there. But let me tell you, they feed you smashed peanut butter sandwiches with no jelly when you first get in. <laughs> it has been transported from the day old bread store. And the day old bread store doesn't have day old bread. They have month old bread. You can smell the mold before you eat it. So it's Paul said, I'm going to try to go in there and get me some of that. <laughs> you, can, you can smell it. That's why every time a cop pulls me over, I got my hands on the steering wheel. Then I move them outside of the window. I say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. How can I comply? Because I don't like day-old, stale, month-old bread. All right. All right. <laughs> told my wife and my daughter, I'll take a bullet for you. I'll die for you. But I ain't going to jail for you. You're going to have to handle that one on your own. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I ain't going to lie for you because they may land me in jail. <laughs> we have to get to a point where we realize that we have intimacy with God. And when we get intimacy with God, it's only through the fact that we are talking to him. Yes. And allowing him to talk to us. Jesus says, let your light shine. Yes. Don't turn it off. Young men, young girls, don't get around your friends and neglect God. Amen. Don't get around your friends and act like you don't know God. Don't he said, let your light shine. Matter of fact, it shines brighter in the dark. Amen. It shines brighter in the dark. The darker the situation becomes, the louder your light must shine. It shines brighter, the darker it gets, the brighter the light gets. And if the light is bright, you'll be able to come and tell them, come on over here. And they'll remind you of what you used to do. And you remind them that I'm not that anymore. All right, all right. Don't let people tell you about your past right. and hold your past against you. Right. Because all of us have a past. Right, right, right. We all are ex something. We, and we all deserve probation officers. And we all deserve to be on probation. We all deserve somebody watching over us, telling us where to go and what to do. All right. there's, there's, a, there's a picture out there of a, a semi-automatic pistol. And it sends a message to every young man. It says what you do is take and look at this pistol. And then before you pull the trigger, Go to the restroom and just sit there for 23 hours a day. What it's saying is, you mess around and pull this trigger. You could be sitting in prison 23 hours a day for pulling a trigger. You just look at the picture. Take it to the restroom with you. Little bitty boxed in restroom. Take it to the restroom with you. And sit there on that toilet 23 hours in one day. And that's what it looked like if you pull the trigger. What a great picture to paint. What a great illustration. We got to use wisdom. We have to use knowledge. We have to use understanding before we make stupid mistakes. And the only way to do it is have intimacy. With God. Intimacy with God. Intimacy. Intimacy with God. Get into God and God get into you. I said to you the first of the year, just give God just 1% more. Be committed to him. Be committed to God so much so until it says, if you let your light shine, it will be shining before other men. Before other children, before other women, if you let your light shine, then other people will see your light shining. Stop gossiping, let your light shine. Stop hating, let your light shine. Stop lying, let your light shine. There are more sinners in this world than dope dealers and prostitutes. There are people in church that think they have arrived. Let your light shine in the door and out the door. Be the same person on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday as you are on Sunday. Don't, don't get 
don't don't have don't be a part of the parking lot ministry. Don't be a part of the parking lot ministry. The parking lot ministry is not it is not sister Amen. The parking lot ministry, uh, uh, brother Hopper. Uh, the parking lot ministry is is not the the first impressions ministry. See, the first impression ministry are those who, who look after the cars on the parking lot, make sure everybody's car is safe and comfortable, make sure the people get in and out the doors. That's the parking lot ministry. It's known as the first impression ministry. Then when you walk in the door, somebody ought to greet you and somebody ought to say, good morning, how you doing? That's the first impression ministry. The, the first impression ministry is the ones who cut the grass and make sure the grass look good when visitors drive up on the campus. The, the first impression ministry are those guys who spend their time early in the morning picking up all the beer cans, the bottles, and the paper out there along the drive, the driveway and along the fence line and sometimes even over in the fence. So when visitors show up, the first impression they get is, man, this is a nice place to be. The first impression ministry are those who usher you to your seat and smile at you and let you know that they are glad you are here. That's the first impression ministry. But let me tell you, there's a parking lot ministry. And this parking lot ministry is not about ministry at all. It's the group that get together before they leave the church. And they talk about everything that happened inside the church. Or they I'll call you on the phone. Girl, did you know? Child, did you hear? And sometimes we don't wait to get on the parking lot, Brother Taylor. We don't wait to get on the parking lot. I can hear them as I'm standing at the front door. I can see them even before the altar. The text declares, let your light shine. Whether it's a little light, let it shine. Whether it's a big light, let it shine. And your light ought to get better, bigger, and brighter with the darkness. He says, let your light shine that men may see your good works. Folk need to see what you do. We ought to be missionaries for the Lord. We ought to tell people about the goodness of God and not only what we tell them about it, we ought to be God in the flesh. We need some Jesus with skin on him. Because he walks with me, he talks with me, he tells me that I am his own. The church today has to stand up and be the church. We ought not be like any social club. We ought not be like any, any jamming club. I told you when I first came to Houston, when I first came to Houston, I went to this club. And I didn't go to the club to, to go to a club. I went to a club because they call it a Christian club. Oh, there's a club just for Christians. Here I go, I'm going to this club. I'm looking for something different. But when I got to the club, Sister Irvin, they had the glass ball rolling around. They had lights coming at it from every angle. They had smoke coming through the room. I thought I was at a Christian club and they were smoking the same thing they were smoking at Grammy's next door. I thought I was in a Christian club. And every now and then they'll play one Christian song and then they get right back to the other one. I'm sitting there saying I could have stayed in the world and they had a dance floor. And the dance floor was just like Grammy's club floor next door. And I'm saying, I'm conflicted here. I, I came here to do this Christian club thing, and lo and behold, I could have paid my $2 next door. I could have given my last $2. And went here. Let me just share something with you. God doesn't want you to be lukewarm. If you're going to do it, do it. If you're going to be for the Lord, be for him. Amen. Let your light shine. And when darkness comes, you got to let your light shine even brighter. Don't force it to shine. Don't push it to shine. And you don't need anybody to see you. God will reveal it to them. You don't have to put yourself in a position where you can see people and you can. And don't beat up on people with the Bible. All right. It was just yesterday you were just in the same position they are. You can't beat up on people with the Bible. You know, it's one thing, one thing, one thing I really, really don't like, uh, Sister Gaza, and I can talk about it because I'm one of them, right? I don't like when we're having a conversation as preachers, and all of a sudden, a guy has to go into his mode, you know. Yeah, Doc. Yeah, Doc. I, I got to let everybody know that 
that I'm the, I'm the, I'm the pastor over there. I'm the potentate. And then I, the other thing I hate is they say, my people. My folk going to do it this way. My folk knows me. Let me just serve you notice this morning. Don't any of you belong to me. Right. Not even the one that sits on the piano belong to me. Now, I may belong to her, but none of them belong to me. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad that you don't belong to me because you are accountable to God and more, much more than you are accountable to me. Amen. She says, let your light shine. And when you let it shine, let it shine so men can see your good works. And finally, he says, because of your intimacy with God, they will glorify God. Our whole purpose of being on planet Earth is to glorify God. Our focus on planet Earth is to glorify God. We stand on planet Earth so we can let our light shine. And it doesn't matter how little it is, let it shine. Doesn't matter how small you are, let it shine. And whenever somebody tries to put your light out and tell you it doesn't take all that, just remind them that what I used to be, I'm not there anymore. And remind them that I know who God is. And because I know who he is, I'm just going to show you who he is. I'm not going to tell you who it is. The songwriter declares, let your light shine everywhere you go. Even in your home, let it shine. In your neighborhood, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Whatever you do, make sure you have impact on people. Whatever you do, make sure you have influence. Whatever you do, make sure you have intimacy with God. And when you let your light shine, men will see your good works and glorify your Father, God who is in heaven. That's what Jesus did. Jesus only obeyed the Father and he glorified the Father. When did he do it? Over 2,000 years ago. Jesus the Christ, I tell you, he died on Calvary. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. He rose early that third day morning. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. His light is shining. His light is shining bright. I don't know it's shining. It's shining in me. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. Come on, church. Let our light shine. Come on, church. Make sure we be an example before the men. And if we let that light shine, God will be glorified. And men will get to know him as the only son of Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus. The righteous, righteous lamb of God. His name is Jesus who gave his life as a voluntary, voluntary sacrifice for you and me. He died on Calvary. He laid all day and all night in the bar with him. But early that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. The door is open. The invitation is extended. Let your light shine. This little light of mine.
I'm gonna let it shine. receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This is your moment. In order for you to go to heaven, you must believe the story. You must trust the story that Jesus died for you. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. He rose from the dead. If you would, bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Believing this simple story. Just repeat these simple words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you honestly prayed this prayer, you are now born again. You are on your way to heaven when you leave earth. And you will rejoice with the angels in heaven. And you will get to meet the Lamb of God. If you need a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Where he is the captain of the ship. Where he is the leader here at the New Beginning Church. Please feel free to meet with us on Wednesday night for 715 Bible study. Or meet with us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. And continue to meet with us at 10.30 a.m. for worship service. Thank you for being with us and joining us. I want to thank God for who he is and what he's already done. Thank God for the Lamb of God. His name is Jesus. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. Raise your hand way up in the air and you will be served. If you need an envelope. We thank you for increase. We thank you for income. 
Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we come to give unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. If you want to give electronically, you can do so by giving by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gift, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. That is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. I ask this side to stand, follow first impressions from the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's tithes, offerings, and sacrificial gifts. March 10th at 10.30 a.m. and at 3 o'clock p.m., the New Beginning Church will celebrate 31 years of God's blessings and favor on our church. Amen. Our special guest will be Pastor Lionel Aaron of True Vision, True Vision Baptist Church at 10.30 a.m. and Pastor Murray Martin at, of Holman Street Baptist Church at 3 o'clock p.m. Everyone is encouraged to attend both services. Prayer and Fasting Prayer and fasting will be on will be March 10th through 30th, 2024. We will refrain from pork, beef, sodas, sweets, and fried food. We are praying for our, our church's growth spiritually, numerically, and financially, family union, and personal enrichment. Garage sale. Please mark your calendars for Saturday, March 16th from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock a.m. In an effort to continue to raise funds for our upcoming domestic mission trip, we will have a garage sale on the parking lot of NBC. We are seeking willing workers and gently used items for the event. Please sign up with Sister Arely Trejo if you are available to help and work or donate gently used items for this event. We will have a short meeting after service today to discuss the details of the event. Daylight saving time. Daylight saving time begins Sunday, March 10th, please set your clocks one hour ahead. 
upcoming events, music classes at NBC. Music classes are offered on Friday nights from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. and on Sunday mornings from 8 o'clock a.m. Please see Sister Carolyn Davis for more information. Bible listening and journaling for 2024. We are listening to the New Testament in 2024 along with the study of our weekly Sunday school lesson. Please continue to study God's word. Domestic mission trip. Turning Hearts Music Ensemble and the NBC Youth are planning a domestic mission trip traveling from Texas to Mississippi and Tennessee on June 6th through 10th, 2024. The trip is open for anyone who wish to travel with us. Your first payment of $150 in person is due. To make donations, please dial turningheartsme at gmail.com. Please remember those on our prayer list. Kenneth Bell, Hobbs family, Banks and Sellers families, Vastine Martin, Khalil Ridgeway, Lance Elridge and family, Nathan Garrett, Chad Warner, Vanessa Anderson, Pacheco family, LaBee family, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Servin and Garcia family, Flora Palm, Fatima <coughs> Granados, Beverly Wallace, Aria Carey Spencer, Mallory Williams, Vivian Eswaha, Ed Brandon and family, Doris Bridgeforth, Jacqueline Torres, Raymond Alfred Jr., Al Brinson, Terrence Miller, Leverage for the Harvest and World Peace. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Please let me reiterate that um, your deposit for the mission trip is due today. That's $150 per person. If you want to give more, that's just fine. For those of you who are donating that are not going, for those of you who are donating, now is a good time to donate as we have secured the bus and we're in the process of paying that particular bill. So if you want to donate and you're not going, you today will be a good day, a good time to do that. Amen. Also, I want to remind you that um, our prayer and fasting time is 21 days. Our prayer and fasting time is 21 days. That means at midnight, March the 9th, Saturday at midnight, we begin uh, fast and then we start up on Resurrection Sunday we break the fast amen on Resurrection Sunday we will break the fast uh, we are praying for our church growth spiritually numerically and financially we're praying for family unity that is your personal families as well as your church family and we're praying, praying for personal enrichment that God will, will enrich us and, and bless us to have intimacy more so with God. Church anniversary, 31 years for the New Beginning Church. Hallelujah. Church anniversary. I'm asking members of the New Beginning Church as well as our visitors to join us for both services as we celebrate 31 years. Please stay for a while after the church is over so we can uh, get a handle on the garage sale. This is, this is not something I'm an expert Yet, but there are people who are present that is, boy, that was terrible English. This is not something in which I'm an expert. So uh, please hang around to get instruction from those who, who are experts at this. Daylight saving time. That means your clock go forward. We spring forward. We fall backwards, right? So we're in the spring of the year. We're going to spring forward. And as we spring forward, that means that if you have to stay up all night to be to church on time, stay up all night, do whatever you got to do to get here. Amen. Some folks, I, some folks say, oh, that hour just tore me up. Well, we've been doing that hour as long as you've been on, on planet Earth. So let's let's do it. Uh, you know, time goes up for, for us for work also, but we have to be there on time. Amen. So everybody, go ahead and turn over new leaves and uh, let's make it happen and watch what, what God will do. We want to make sure that we support our youth and our young people. Let's go before God in prayer for those who are on our prayer list. Father God, we honor you now. We praise you. We bless your holy name. Lord, we know that you are good and you are God. We know you know all things and you do all things well. We pray for the sick. We pray for the bereaved. We pray for those who are asking, Father. We ask you to bless and touch as only you can mold and shape our lives and our hearts. Bless us, Father God, that we will be about your business. And Lord, we ask you to give us strength to do it. Encourage somebody today. Bless their lives and bless what they're going through. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. I'm going to ask our visitors to stand. If you're visiting with us, especially if you're visiting for the first time, please stand. Tell us your name and, and who invited you to be here. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming all the way from Detroit to be at New Beginning Church. Brandon, you hear that? She came all the way from Detroit. And you came from around the corner. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you so much. Please fill out the business card. I want to give you a call and see how the, your experience was here. Thank you, young man, for bringing your mama to church today. Thank you so much for bringing your mama. You, I know you got up and pulled her by a toe and said, Mama, it's time for us to go to church today. Thank you so much for bringing her. We're so glad that you all have come. Amen. It is communion time. It is that moment that we have heard in our readings that Jesus met with his disciples right before, right before he was crucified. Time for communion. It is that intimate time that we spend with God. Here at our church, we do it on special days and we do it on first Sunday. This happened to be the first Sunday in March, so we want to always remember Jesus. Jesus says, as often as you do it, it shows forth my death and my suffering until I come again. And so we want to honor Jesus Christ, the one who died for us and rose from the dead. We want to thank God for what he is and who he is and what he has already done. And therefore we'll come for communion. All of those of you who have received Jesus as your personal savior and have water, been water baptized all the way under the water and back up, this is your moment to recognize communion. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We honor your name. God, we thank you, Father God, for Jesus, for his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection. We thank you for the table. We ask you to bless the food and the drink. We thank you for the table that it represents what Jesus has already done for us. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us and keeping us and allowing us, Father God, to commune with you. Lord, we ask you to bless us now. We ask you, Father God, to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for falling short and messing up. We ask you, Father, to bless our lives. We ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with us. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you watched? Are you washed in the blood of 